What is up, y'all? This is JT. This is the uh, Skill DIY saw, and uh, on the saw right now, sort of cut through, is a three quarter. I'm using a Hercules 40 tooth. Uh, it's a finer blade, but not too fine. I find that it works really well on masonite. And I forgot to put my bucket underneath my uh, catch. So, yeah, I'm going to put my bucket under there. And I'm going to try to manhandle this 8x4 sheet. So this should be fun to watch. Let's see if we can do it. Now I got a plastic bag in the uh, trash can. I don't know if you can see it or not. A little Walmart bag in there. And hopefully that'll catch it and then I can just do whatever with it. I might end up using some of the sawdust to clean up oil or whatever, but let's get this going. Not recommended that you do this, but don't really have a choice, so we'll back it up just a hair. Okay, obviously, don't ever do that. And second off, if you are gonna do that, have uh, extra rollers or a catching bench or whatever. But yeah, that wasn't the cleanest cut because I was trying to manhandle it. You need one person to catch the wood on the backside and then one to keep it tight against the fence. So luckily I compensated for a little bit of human error and as long as I've got one side that's clean, that's all that matters. Uh, any of the other things can be straightened up with the miter saw to the flat face. So it's no big deal. But now I have a more manageable piece and I can do my four and a half inch baseboard, toe kick board, whatever you want to call it. And then on the other side, uh, as you can see, when the other piece fell down, it kind of hit the table leg, and so it probably dented it. This stuff is very weak. And what I'll do is probably use the factory edge, because it's pretty good. Not perfect, but it's it's definitely better than, I would never, I would never table saw cut on this, because a couple of times it did tweak out on me. And right here, there's a saw, saw blade burn and a little bit right there. So always compensate for your your blade width, which I think this one is pretty close to an eighth, maybe. Let me check. OK, 
Okay, this blade is uh, over a sixteenth, but not an eighth, so it's probably in the thirty-second range, which I don't have on this tape measure. Which I got a new Stanley. It's really nice. I only paid ten dollars for this, and I got a thirty also that doesn't have the magnet on it. The magnet's actually pretty cool, but uh, yeah, ten dollars at Home Depot. I don't know if they're gonna be on sale for much longer. So yeah, this saw works wonderful. Uh, but like, for instance, stuff like this, you're gonna, is, this is a two, maybe a three man job, because you gotta catch this uh, cut off. And just, I don't know if you know this, but three quarter MDF is heavy, super heavy. But it did a wonderful job. Um, now I'm gonna set it up so that I can cut my uh, four and a half inch strips or I might we'll see the other one I don't know where I need to cut it at so I probably won't cut it yet but yeah I'm gonna set up for a four and a half inch strips for baseboard and then I gotta cut threes for a door trim and then I'm gonna route all those and then paint them and eventually put them up so yeah uh, that's it for this part of the video. If I come back, then we'll show some of the four and a half inch rips. Okay, here's an attempt at a four and a half rip. All right, so once you get down to a more manageable piece, you can kind of do it on your own. It's not incredibly fun. I don't have anything to catch it with. So this may be difficult. Wow, well, my camera's full of dust.
sure you don't get that clean cut. Nice night. We just ready to blade it off. Now these are my baseboards. They need to be uh, a little bit sanded on this edge, probably by hand. And then router them out, and then we'll paint them. 